Gwatsi helpa, duhiname tsatjuwitsa shuimi hanu. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us as we kick off today's media roundtable. To every family member, survivor, partner, and member of the media taking part in this conversation, thank you for being here. I'm grateful for your engagement as we put a vision for a better future into action. When I was in Congress, I worked tirelessly for the passage of the Not Invisible Act as part of the effort to address the legacy of violence and trafficking that tribal communities, especially women and two-spirit peoples, have weathered for many generations. That violence, as so many of us know, has perpetuated the crises of missing and murdered indigenous peoples and human trafficking. This trauma impacts each of us in Indian country. We all know someone or know of someone who has gone missing. This trauma we carry every single day. The Not Invisible Act Commission, which included law enforcement, tribal leaders, federal partners, service providers, survivors, and family members of victims, was tasked with writing recommendations to Congress and federal agencies on how the federal government can best address these interlinked crises. After seven public hearings across the country, a two-day virtual hearing, and countless hours of input from survivors, family members, law enforcement experts, and tribal communities, the Commission submitted their recommendations to our department, the Department of Justice, and to Congress in November of 2023. In total, the Commission submitted over 200 recommendations to the federal government. I am so deeply grateful for the work of the former Commission members, many of whom have joined for today's discussion. It was your tenacity, your thoughtfulness, and your commitment to championing such a heavy task that made these recommendations possible. Your contributions are building our shared future in which everyone can feel safe. Since day one, the Biden-Harris administration has been committed to taking this work and fulfilling our promises to Indian country seriously. Today is part of that promise as we act on one of the Commission's recommendations and continue building on the important progress that the Departments of the Interior and Justice have advanced as part of our implementation. Because the truth is, a crisis like this one relies on the media to help tell our stories rather than sensationalize them. It requires that journalists cover when a loved one goes missing and share life-saving information with the public with the urgency these cases demand. It requires that media organizations ensure there is indigenous representation in their workforce from journalists to editors. And it requires that newsrooms shine a bright light on the ongoing crisis that indigenous communities live with every single day. A crisis that exists in silence will never be solved and solving it depends on the partnerships we build here today. Today's roundtable is one step of many to ensure our missing relative stories are told. I'm so grateful to today's participants for your commitment to this most essential work and your willingness to listen. I also want to thank Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs, Brian Newland, for facilitating today's discussion to help inform best practices that we will produce and distribute. I know that together we can make real, tangible progress toward keeping our communities safe. Dawa'e, thank you so much for being here.